Lastly, while the government recognizes the significance and sensitivities associated with the topic of immigration, as a country, we are facing times of the, that the likes we have never seen before. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in business and economic uncertainty, and permission to reside and seek employment is going to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Work permit approvals are not guaranteed. Work permits will be denied. As a result, in some of the cases, guest workers may need to leave the island if their work permit is not granted. You don't have to go home, boy. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Welcome back, people, and happy Bermuda Day. Not the original Bermuda Day on the 24th. This is the new Bermuda Day on the 29th. Whatever. We're not here for that right now. We're here to check out the news. So what's in the news today? Front page, front page. Keynes stresses Bermudian fresh jobs policy. Business owners should employ jobless Bermudians rather than overseas staff as the island recovers from the economic impact of the coronavirus crisis. Wayne Keynes added that expatriate employees may need to leave if their permits were not renewed, but he warned against xenophobia. So two things that immediately come to mind when I read this. First thing is, I don't know why he added that xenophobia statement. Well, I know why he added it, but you know these type of articles and these types of uh, statements are going to flare up people's xenophobic instincts because especially in Bermuda, we have a lot of friction between locals and expats which you know it's inevitable but that's the way it is the second thing that comes to mind when i read this article is the split in the uh expats that are working here and what i mean that what i mean by that is the white collar expats and the blue collar expats because i don't think this really i don't think what he's saying here is geared towards the white collar expats because i think for the most part they're not perfect but i think they already do a pretty good job of hiring Bermudians into positions where they're qualified. And what I mean is, um, you don't see too many, uh, you don't see too many of the entry level positions or the lower level positions in an exempt company filled by non Bermudians. I don't think I've ever seen that personally, you know, the secretaries, the, um, you know, interns, um, entry level positions, those are almost exclusively, um, staffed by Bermudians. And as you go up the corporate ladder, then you start to see more and more expats because those types of jobs require a certain level of experience, a certain level of training that would be nearly impossible to fill like direct exclusively from the Bermudian employment pool. So that's why I think this is pretty much geared towards the blue collar workers, the, you know, restaurant employees, the, uh, I guess, landscapers, things like that. I guess I kind of agree with what he's saying. Because, like I said, in my line of business or in the places where I've normally worked, you don't see a whole lot of expats in those entry level positions or the lower level positions. I don't think you see pretty much any expats in those positions. It's very rare. Whereas when you go to a restaurant or to, you know, a food place or something like that, you almost always see an expat um, behind the cash register or waiting tables, washing dishes, stuff like that. And let me stop her and say that I'm no expert in that industry, right? I'm hoping somebody will see this video and maybe leave a comment and kind of explain why that is, that you hardly see any Bermudians in there. I can speculate, which is what I'm going to do here. And what I think it is, is that it's really hard for Bermudians to survive in those jobs. They don't pay much, right? And some of those expats work really, really hard. You might call it slave labor sometimes. Sometimes they don't get days off for like weeks. They're working weeks at a time and then for 10, 11, 12 hour days and they get one day off at the end of the month, stuff like that. Like I know a few people that work in the industry and they're good people, you know, they're really good people, they're hard workers, they're, but they're just there to make a few money and send it back home, right? So they'll put up with almost anything. Uh, because the conditions, as bad as they are, are a lot better than what they would, or at least the payoffs are a lot better than what they would get in their home countries. There are a lot of good people. I have nothing against them, but I feel like in this environment, it's an unfortunate uh, circumstance, right? Because 
a lot of people out of work right now. Hotels are closed. We're looking at the tourist season this year. And a lot of people would work their jobs. Look at Sargasso. You see a lot of people driving driving um, for Sargasso right now because they're looking for work. And there's not a lot out there. So, unfortunately, when it comes to making a decision between local Bermudians getting a job and, you know, expat getting a job, it's going to have to be the local. It's going to have to be. So, I say that with a heavy heart because I know that means a lot of those people are going to have to go home. And I, I know I'm friends with a ton of them, so it's sad, but that's the way it is. But yeah, if anybody has any sort of insight into that industry and what's going on and you know maybe the reasons why they bring in guest workers as opposed to hiring more Bermudians let me know in the comments you know but that's it for me that's it for now and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks <laughs>